continuation of our mountain, only this time it's somewhat warmer color. And we got a church building coming up against it. There are two things possible in painting. You can have, you know, something's either too big or too small. So uh, there's still one more, perhaps, perhaps the most uh, effective editing of all, and that is to destroy the painting. <laughs> Once again, I'll try to avoid making them look really square, and I'll do that by leaving them broken. So that, that's gonna work pretty well, I think. A couple years ago, I had an interview with a magazine, and, and the, the editor said, well, how, how is it you do your paintings? And I said, well, it's like this. I, I like to get it down, get it done, and get to lunch. One of the things I've discovered since I've been teaching watercolor and, and doing it myself is the value of the lightness and darkness of, of things and the contrast between them. So I always start my students off by doing black and white pictures. In other words, just one colour. I always say one, two, three, go, you see? And it, you see, it's all starting to, to work now. A little bit going in there. Don't be afraid of dark, rich paint. It has its place. Especially if you're putting it on a damp surface. It's a, you just want to be able to see that cloud of the sky through the through the branches of the tree. After standing back and look at that, looking at my painting, I've decided to make some changes in the shape of this rose. What I will do is just put a faint color here. It doesn't have to be garish, but it, repeating something in the bouquet and pulling away. It's a very soft, subtle color. Now we're going to try a female figure. And um, I worked with this model over in Sarasota, Florida. And uh, she has on kind of a greenish neutral dress, which I wanted to I thought would be nice and with her hair and get some worms in her hair. Eh, I like it. I, at this, remember when I was talking earlier about looking more at your painting than looking at uh, the photograph. There comes a point where that's really important. Probably pretty quickly. <laughs> this is kind of a mass of them. You can get away with that too. You can. Uh not have to think of these as single items. Sometimes grouping things together works really well. It shows that we were able to paint the thing being the sky and a reflection of the sky and not have to paint the, the entire top of the painting before we got into that. But I was very careful, had a pretty careful drawing here, so I didn't migrate as I'm bringing the sky down into where the boats ought to be, because that's very easy to have that happen. And the same thing with the boats themselves. They, they were done, you know, pretty much completed. And I have to do that just as much as everybody else because we don't know that we're going to have this shade of gray, if that's going to reflect in here, or what value, or how deep these uh, shadows and some of the other elements are going to be. Okay, I'm ready to revisit my trees now. And uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I want to take the trees in the middle here and push them back a little bit. I feel like they're a little too close to the front of the painting. Try to soften up some of the, the grasses here. I'm gonna come in with a lighter color, but I'm also gonna scrape off a little bit of paint. And this is gonna do a couple of different things. It's gonna exaggerate the direction of my strokes a little bit. It's gonna pull up some of the earlier stuff. And as I mentioned, the paint is still wet, so I'm just kind of working it into the paint that's already on the panel. And I'll kind of go over it to make it soft. This is going quite quickly, isn't it? So let's go ahead and just continue with that color. Now, at this point, I'm going to take a moment and I'm going to dry this section here. The reason for that is I want to put in this area of the mountain and the trees here. 
For this area not to bleed up into what is already wet here, this area has to be totally dry in order for me to create an edge right here on this paper. So let me go ahead and take a moment. I will dry this and then we'll come back and I'll finish out this area for you. You're in charge. This brush will not do anything until you tell it to. Okay. Now that I have this, and then for the for the where the water meets the the bank and the snow here, then we will just take and soften that edge up. The cool thing about pastels, they're dry, they're dry pigment, um, they're beautiful colors, but I love blending pastel with pastel. And you'll see what I'm talking about here. And I am going to have to go in and do a little bit of blending with my fingers in a moment. It's amazing how we're able to, like now I'm stepping, our, I'm stepping us back in the painting here. It's just, it's really fun to have, get to this stage of the painting and start to orchestrate the way the eye moves through the piece. So this guy is going to come right off the front edge of this. That darkness and that contrast, I can even broaden this up a little bit more. Let's just look past all those other things. That's a heck of a lot more interesting. This is almost a separate painting into itself. It's a two-sided petal. And in this case, again, I'm doing the yellow. I'll pick up just a touch. I want this to be very pastel. 